Hi everyone, welcome to the presentation. Today I'm presenting deep entity classification, abusive account detection for online social network. My name is Tang. I work at Facebook, focus on integrity related topics. There are many types of abuses on Facebook. For example, clickbait, spam, harassment, bullying, hate speech, and nudity are among top of them. By definition, we define abusive account as an account that is created for the purpose of abuse. For example, the account only serves for the purpose of doing activities that goes against Facebook's community standard. Taking a look at the stats from 2020 Q4, Facebook took down more than 1.3 billion abusive accounts, and most of those accounts are actually taken down within just minutes from the registration before they could even become active on the platform. The detection of abusive account comes with a few different challenges. So, for example, the number one here is that the menu review does not scale. It's just impossible for Facebook to review billions of abusive accounts all by human. Secondly, the heuristic rules are hard to be created and maintained over time, especially given we are in the adversary environment and the attackers keep changing all the time. The third, of course, adversaries they move extremely fast and we have to always adapt our solutions to the new attack patterns. That being said, Facebook is investing in the machine learning based detection in a way that is sustainable and scalable. The traditional ML approach for the integrity problem is that we first have the account features and then we use the menu labels. In combination, we put them together into the model architecture. The types of account features include, for example, location features, number of posts from the account, number of friends of the account, those direct features owned by the target account. There are a few problems with the traditional ML approaches in the integrity space with scales of billions like Facebook. The most important ones include the following three. And our framework of deep entity classification is created to solve them. Let's get started with the first challenge. The first challenge is that the features can be easily gamed by the attackers. The problem here is that think about if you use the location feature of an account as a direct feature, it's extremely easy for them to, for example, simply change their settings of their account. Or they could use a VPN to fake where they're actually coming from. So those kind of direct features, they're easy to be gamed. The proposal from DEC is that we extract the deep features of accounts by aggregating the properties and behavior features from their neighbors and find out entities. The second problem is that the features are handwritten, which only scales to hundreds of features. The proposal from DEC is that it defines dozens of features per edge and then apply all those edges and recursively traverse the graph to aggregate them. And uh, this actually results in tens of thousands of features in a scalable way. The last piece of problem is also the biggest problem. It's that it's extremely hard for us to obtain a large amount of ground truth data. And the proposal from DEC is to use a multi-stage training architecture. The first stage leverages the large amount of low precision automated labels, and the second stage leverages the small amount high precision human labels. Let's dive into those each different problems separately. Get started with the deep feature extraction. For each of the Facebook user, we apply the first degree of fan out to take a look at of his or her friends and devices and the groups they're in, the pages they're posted to, and then apply the aggregation functions. For example, the numeric aggregation functions such as max, mean, and mean, and the uh, categorical aggregation functions, such as what is the percentage of the empty values, what the entropy of the categorical values. By applying those standard aggregation functions, we achieve those uh, aggregated features. In the actual DC system, we actually take a look at more than the first order of fanout. We would apply the second order of the fanout, and then apply the aggregation function to those second order of fanout entity features. As an example, 
for each of the target account, we first find out to their friends, and then we find out to all the posts generated by their friend and how many likes are generated from those posts. We take a look at all those features and aggregate them back using the standard aggregation functions. So why do we do this? We have two major reasons. The first reason is that it is much more difficult for the attackers to alter the features from their, their neighboring accounts, even from their neighbors of neighbors' accounts. Why it's easy for them to change their own location, gender, and the age information, it's become exponentially more difficult to change the same information for their second order of fanout entities. Secondly, it's because by applying the different aggregation functions for many different types of entities and their features, we can easily create thousands of features using such standard format. Move on to the training data part. There are two types of uh, labels used in the Facebook environment training. One is that uh, low precision, high volume, low cost automated labels. The sources from those labels are normally coming from past action accounts and user reports. The second type of label is human label. They are almost the opposite from the automated labels. They're much higher in position. They're much lower in volume. Of course, it's extremely expensive to generate them because they involve the human label from the domain experts. The question here is that how do we avoid overfitting and also obtain the benefit of the high quality labels? The proposal from Deep Entity Classification Framework is to use a multi-stage and multi-task learning architecture. Here's a model architecture. In the first stage, we leverage the low position automated and multi-label data with the second order of deep features. And in this case, it's actually more than 20,000 features. And then we dump them into a multi-task deep neural network model. From there, we extract the embedding from the last hidden layer of the deep neural network and feed them to the second stage. In the second stage, we directly use this uh, high precision human labeled data to train a lightweight model. And the prediction result directly comes from those lightweight model. By using this architecture, we achieve two purposes. The first purpose is that we leverage the first layer to learn from the automated training data. The data volume is huge. It matches well with the amount of features we have, which is more than 20,000 in this case. And because we do not directly use this score result from the first stage, so the precision of the training data actually doesn't have to be perfect, as long as we can learn from those low precision training data and represent the information from using the embedding. The second purpose is that the human label data is only used at the second stage to ensure the accuracy of the model. Although the data amount is relatively small for the human label data, but the embedding space is actually only 256 dimension. So it's actually enough for the training purpose. Moving on to the model comparison, we try three models in the experimental part. The first model is a historical model before DC deployed by Facebook which is only using behavior features plus GBDT model. The second is the DC features plus single stage deep neural network. The third one is DC feature plus multi-stage multitask learning, which is a production model used by the current Facebook. Here's the online evaluation result. The ROC curve and the PR curve both of them, as you can see here, the green line represents the result from the state-of-art DEC uh, multi-stage multitask learning model. It actually outperforms the other two. Moving on to the online evaluation result, we're trying to measure the position and the recall of the DEC model over the 30 days period of time of the real production data. The left side shows the position data, and you can see the position is relatively stable around 90 uh, around 98% over the 30 days. On the right side is the recall data. The y-axis shows the fake account volume. The blue line shows what is the fake account volume without DEC. And the green line shows the same stats with DEC. And the delta here is represented using the red line. 
And from the figure, you can tell that the red line is actually relatively stable over the 30 days, meaning the recall of the DC system is stable against adversaries because we're able to take down similar amount of accounts every day over the 30 days in production. Thanks for listening to the talk. Here are a few takeaways from the talk. On the feature-wise, the DEC system extracts the graph-based deep features from accounts. It allows us to scale features and resist adversary adoption. On the architecture-wise, to leverage both the automated data and the human label data, we apply a multi-stage and multi-task learning. And jointly, this architecture and the graph-based deep features improve the model performance. Thirdly, because of DEC's two-year deployment, when the paper before the paper was published, it has resulted in Facebook taking down hundreds of millions of abusive accounts over the past few years. Lastly, which is also the most interesting part, counterintuitively, the deployment of DEC reduced the global CPU usage on Facebook despite the high computational load. This is because because of DEC, we are able to take down so many abusive accounts. This actually significantly reduces the CPU that is spent on such abusive account activities on the platform. Thank you.